Hello, I'm in the conservatory. There are no stained mattresses behind me. Oh, I was so horrified at that video. I thought I was going to be horrified by stormy seas and uh, near drowning moments, but <clears throat> no. <laughs> that final scene, I just gasped in horror. The perils of being the family of a YouTuber, or a daily vlogger anyway. chatty video for ages and I think this is just going to be a bit of a stream of consciousness so it's the end of the summer holidays and everybody's gone back to school Darcy's started college Louis just left to go to New York and then California etc and I have a house to myself again and can begin to think straight, think straight about what I want to do and I kind of need to focus my thoughts so I thought I would just pull them out to you guys. I think the last few months have been a healing process. I keep saying that kind of thing, talking about like things that we've been through and recovering from them and that kind of thing but it's, this is probably just normal life. You go through stuff, stuff happens to you, you learn new stuff, you do new things, you experience things and you have to learn from those. They bring up things in your life and you have to deal with them. I remember when I was a teenager going to a youth talk and the guy who was doing the talking was saying that life is a bit like a, a chessboard. Um, in that it's checkered, so you've got a white square, black square, white square, black square, um, and that you alternate between joy and travail. I don't know where that comes from, I bet it's some like really key quote from some literary or scientific source, but anyway, like valleys and hills, and that the valleys or the travail parts are a little bit like a refining process like the heat being turned up in a crucible where somebody's refining gold or something like that so maybe it's that sort of thing and I have had an amazing summer I went to the south of France you can see from the south of France vlogs uh, shortly there will be some vlogs coming up of this amazing trip that I had with my dad around Scotland. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have uh, had a glimpse of all those kind of things. And then a couple of days after I got back from Scotland with my dad, I went away with Darcy. So Darcy was not keen to come away with the family. She really wanted to chill out. And uh, she's 16, you know, who wants to go away with their family when they're 16? And she had the opportunity of having a friend that she was at primary school with to stay. This friend is Brazilian, but lives in Spain and she hasn't seen her since primary school. So that was a really great opportunity for them to reconnect. And they went up to London and had loads of fun and chilled out here, but she hadn't been away. So after I got back from Scotland with my dad, we went to Paris. I don't think she liked sharing a room with me though. <laughs> and first of all, we went to this youth hostel and um, it was a bit too youth hostel -y for her. So too many rowdy youth. <laughs> so we went to like a quieter hotel. I had a great time on holiday, um, but I think when you are not in the kind of ongoing part of your life and what your purpose is and what you're supposed to be doing is as uncertain as mine has been. <laughs> it tends to be running through your mind all the time and kind of slightly bothering you. But I think I'll get myself organised in the next few days. I think I've got to just face it that family has been a really big priority. Darcy's been a big priority. My dad has been a big priority. It was so fantastic to go away with him. We just had such a good time. 
we went to a reunion of his primary school. Well, the, the, the class were there all the way through to 18, but this was the 80th anniversary of them starting primary school. So that's really awesome. And there was like 15 of them. And then because we had gone all the way to Scotland, we went around the Highlands. So beautiful. I don't know why I haven't been before really. Yeah, I've only been kind of up some of the glens, but you know, the small ones like Glen Clover, things like that. So yeah, we went to Cairngorm, we went to Glencoe. I've been to Fort William before. I've been up the west coast before, but yeah, it's so beautiful. I pretty much decided that I'm just not gonna do IT training anymore. I think there is a possibility of some work in April and it will be through a company that I haven't worked for before. It will be a fresh start and I can dictate the terms. I've said I don't want to have any more than eight in the class. I think that is why I'm not enjoying IT training anymore. Everybody keeps trying to put more and more people onto courses and my experience, maybe it's my technique, I don't know, is that people are not satisfied. Although my dad says in the army, uh, the maximum number in a group for group sessions is eight. And then after that, you kind of split into two groups and there's just too much going on for everybody to be aware of, of what everybody's going through. And that gets reflected in the evaluations at the end of the course. So you might address the whole group because of something you've been addressing with one individual um, to try and encourage them. And then other people report back that you're patronizing and you think, ah, oh. so yeah, I'm too old for all that kind of thing. I've been doing it for 25 years anyway. So time for something new I think. So I'm going to carry on, oh I don't know, adding to my skills I guess is what you call it. I've done this university course I had no idea if I'm ever going to do anything with that. It was a good exercise in I hate doing academic work <laughs> and it helped me feel for Darcy and academic stuff just doesn't suit everybody and at least I had a taster of that before committing to like a three-year degree course or something <laughs> so I don't think I want to go ahead and do a degree or anything but I would like to do some more professional training and I think I'm going to go ahead with this coaching training. I've really benefited from coaching myself and also on this preview couple of days that I went on they explained the difference between um, consultancy and mentoring and therapy and coaching and what I went for was a mixture of therapy and coaching uh, in that they look into your past and you're looking at things that might have affected you and affected the way you respond to things now and really you really have to be trained as a psychologist or a psychiatrist or, or whatever to do that kind of thing but with coaching, you're not looking to the past, you're looking to the future. And you are not giving advice either. You are there as a sounding board. You are going to be equipped with tools that you can equip them with and little strategies. And there will definitely be a lot of understanding of psychology and neuroscience and that kind of thing which is the, all the sort of stuff I've been looking into over the last couple of years as I've been trying to recover myself and try and get back on track and I think I've said this in a couple of videos as well that I keep feeling like oh I haven't got back on track and I'm not you know firing on all cylinders and that kind of thing and now I think I'm just on a different track and I, I know I've said that before I think I'm just on a different track and I think I have a different engine as well. <laughs> so, I think I just got to learn how to drive this engine differently. So that's all a bit vague and waffly. Sorry about that. I'm learning not to take life too seriously. I have definitely realised uh, when things are other people and not me there have been quite a few significant people in my life that have been very controlling, people that are wired up to kind of win um, and 
don't have you as a priority and nurturing and cherishing you as a priority and I'm learning how to handle that I'm learning to take a step back and think ah it's not me it's, it's their little technique for trying to get what they want and if I'm clear about what I want and I'm clear that I'm okay then uh, I'm going to be a lot happier I'm already a lot happier and one of the things that helped on this preview coaching session was when you're helping other people to achieve their goals you eliminate ought you ought to do that or if they feel they ought to do it and then you can be much clearer about what you're about and what your goals are and don't be doing things because you ought to or somebody else thinks you ought to that's been very freeing that's been very liberating oh, so yeah I'm feeling a lot more peaceful and peacing out <laughs> and enjoying life and it was an adventure over the summer um, I don't think I want to have too much adventure <laughs> I'm also realizing I am an introvert um, and that has really helped me to pace myself a lot more when I felt like, oh, what's the matter with me? I'm so stressed out. And, you know, like Ben might kind of say, you know, why can't you cope with that? Come on, let's go and do this. Let's go and do that. And be as manic as he is. Now I can say, well, you're wired differently from me. And I've actually reached my limit for today. And I just need to chill down now. Thank you very much. And yeah, there's no, it takes all the angst out of it. So instead of battling, it's just understanding how each other is wired and how each other ticks. So, what else can I tell you about? I am kind of longing to kind of get things on track and get a bit more organised. And so many things have just been happening kind of randomly. And, well, you know, like my mum becoming ill and and, and then passing away. It's not, it wasn't random, but it's like, that's not something you plan for. Um, and there's a lot of stuff involved in taking care of that kind of thing helping my dad to recover he's recovering more really from the having to care for my mum as she got more and more ill um, but yeah and helping him get back on track get on top of his garden and um, yeah get things sorted out in the house yeah and I've taken the pressure off myself as well in terms of achieving things and I remember once I went for a a bit of counselling from somebody. I'd got like really stressed out by a load of things and somebody recommended somebody and it was just a one-off thing. And one of the things that she said that kind of like disturbed me afterwards and every time I kind of thought back to that was she said, why do you feel like you need to achieve all the time? And I was thinking, well, everybody wants to achieve. Everybody wants to have, like, have a purpose and reach their potential and reach their goals. Um, but I know what she meant. And I think, yeah, I, I don't want to have this drivenness to achieve. But then I was thinking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the top part of the pyramid is self-actualization. And I thought, oh yeah, that's what it is. It's not achieving, it's self-actualization. It's living out something that means that your life makes a difference. Not necessarily makes a difference, but you know, things like, for example, my dad's thing, his self-actualization has been mountaineering. He was an engineer, um, had a successful engineering job, doing project management and lots of interesting projects years and years but that was his work and he was very good at that but he absolutely loved mountaineering and he's done the Monroes several times so I remember we were chatting on holiday with somebody and they were talking about Monroes and he said are you a completer and I was thinking oh that's interesting you know my dad had these kind of goals in life to complete the Monroes and then he did them again um, so that was like really interesting and the Monroes, by the way, are any mountain in Scotland over 3,000 feet, I think. I think that's right. So that, you know, having a sense of purpose and achieving that purpose. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was thinking about in terms of just shaking off this 
kind of negative angle on why do you feel like you need to achieve well you know everybody needs to self actualize and below that in the pyramid you've got different things to do with like your physiology you know your health having a roof of your head safety feeling cherished and cared for being you know in a good kind of community of friends and family and there's other ones as well I can't remember what they are um, and if those are not right, then you can't really self-actualise. So I'm going to carry on editing all my travel vlogs. Uh, the first one or two on trips always seem popular and then people like, OK, right, I've seen that. That's enough of that. <laughs> so please watch them <laughs> and please comment. I love people commenting as well. Um, I'm beginning to engage a bit more with social media, Instagram. I just I didn't think I would build up a following on Instagram but being consistent about uploading cool photos seems to have increased my followers by nearly a thousand in the last month so I might keep going with that. I might get sent some cameras and things like that like Louie and Darcy do. Although this camera's alright. I was going to use my smart Samsung one that somebody gave Louie. I think that was an Instagram thing. Um, but it's run out of charge, so I'm using this little Canon power shot thingy that is, has a cracked screen that Louis doesn't use, and I've got a fluffy thing on the top, that's why I'm not looking at the lens, I'm looking at the top, and that is to stop the wind, and in my la latest vlog, the wind is terrible when we're on the beach, obviously there's a big sea breeze coming along, so that should sort that out. So yeah, trying to get more professional about everything and every video I say this, trying to get my life back on track. <laughs> I'm on a different track, yes, I'm on a different track. See you next time.